Okay, hi there. Welcome to a, a small set of videos where we will be looking at some of the supply and demand factors influencing the fast changing market for electric cars in the UK. The changing pattern of new passenger car registration is shown in this chart. Uh, this data chart uh, illustrates how the pattern of demand has changed since 2016. And we can expect the share from electric cars, which is just 3%, if you go back five years ago, you can expect that share to, to rise strongly in the next few years. Notice also the significant decrease in the share of diesel cars uh, in new passenger car registrations. That's now down to 26%. Car sales overall in the UK were down uh, this year in the year to the end of September 2020. Of course, that was mainly due to the pandemic and uh, a fall in real incomes and uh, job insecurity and a drop in consumer confidence. But actually, electric vehicle sales were up in contrast to the steep decline in, in new petrol and diesel products. Shown by this chart here, petrol car sales down by 21% in the year to September 2020. Diesel down nearly 40%. Hybrids up uh, 55%, plug-ins up 140%, and battery electric vehicles up by nearly 200%, despite the fact the car market as a whole was down by just over 4% in the year to September 2020. Uh, this, that said, we can we can see here, this chart, the impact of lockdown induced by the coronavirus pandemic and the steep descent of the UK economy into recession during the second quarter of 2020. So this very sharp rise in electric vehicle sales uh, has been halted for the moment uh, in the second quarter of 2020. Well, let's wait to see what happens uh, throughout the rest of the year and into 2021. This table just gives us a quick overview of the top 10 passenger electric vehicle models in operation in the UK uh, last year in 2019. Uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander was ahead of the game. Nissan Leaf produced here in the UK and Washington, China, we're 33,000. 33, uh, Tesla, of course, who garner a lot of the publicity surrounding electric vehicles. Well, their, their sales were relatively low. Actually, they only appear eighth and ninth in the terms of the top 10 um, vehicle models. One of the aspects of uh, demand in the market is the fact that uh, battery uh, electric cars require vehicle Charging stations. Most people don't have the ability, the wherewithal to charge their vehicles at home, particularly if they have off-road parking. This chart's quite interesting. The, the number of uh, electric vehicle charging stations is clearly rising. The network is increasing as supply expands to meet demand. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders have calculated that something like £20 billion needs to be spent to have enough charging stations for for all new cars to become electric that would be an enormous increase in infrastructure investment in the charging network effectively that's the equivalent of adding i don't know 500 chargers per day between now and 2035 so if we're going to move full scale to electric vehicles there's going to have to be an enormous investment in electric vehicle charging stations and another aspect of what economists call derived demand is the demand for electric batteries, because clearly electric batteries are a key component in electric vehicles. So as the demand for vehicles goes up, so too does the demand for batteries. Economists call this derived demand. And this chart shows forecasted vehicle battery demand in just in the UK from 2020 through to 2050. Now clearly that's a long a long time away, but the demand in terms of gigawatt hours for electric vehicle batteries is going to be substantial. Notice it's a forecast into the future. And of course, economists make assumptions when forecasting the future. Can you think of two assumptions that might be made in this forecast? One is, you know, what are we assuming about the likely size of the electric vehicle market? Not just cars, but also vans delivery vans and, and uh, who knows, buses and um, electric trucks, for example. So you need to make assumptions about the likely size of the market, as well as assumptions about the likely energy efficiency of batteries. Uh, we've spoken about the UK in this first video. 
Uh, let's just spend a couple of minutes thinking about another country where there's been uh, a huge expansion of electric vehicle use, and that's Norway. Uh, in Norway, 60% of cars sold in Norway in the autumn of 2020 were electric. Keep in mind the figure for the UK, 11%. In Norway, it's 60%. In fact, when hybrids are included, hybrid cars, the total jumps to pretty much the 90%. And Norway has a goal for all new cars, all new cars in the country sold after 2025 to be electric. That's a decade or more ahead of, of the goal, the ambition of, of other countries. I think what's interesting when you think about Norway is the extent to which demand is being influenced by government financial incentives. The Norwegian government has brought in a whole range of incentives from if you've got an electric car you're exempt from tolls uh, you're exempt from 25 percent vat on the purchase price you don't pay road tax you get special access to bus lanes and obviously given the nature of norway you get a maximum 50 percent of the total amount on ferry fares for electric vehicles so nor the norwegian government has brought in significant incentives and this chart i think uh, uh, shows that the scale of the increase of the the market share, particularly post kind of post 2016, that share has been rising very strongly in the last two or three years. Keep in mind, of course, uh, that Norway has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world. It is a rich, advanced country. Uh, so with incomes higher, more people and more households have the annual income to be able to afford new electric cars. There is a strong, effective demand for electric cars, whereas for many people in the UK, it's a, it's a uh, something that we'd like to have in the future. I'm certainly included in that, but at the moment, the issue of affordability is a factor holding back demand. So there we go. Uh, we just started by looking at the market as a whole. In the second video, we'll focus on demand, demand for electric vehicles, and in the third video, we will focus on supply. Before we bring the two together, with a little exercise on supply and demand theory.